do you want to talk about monomer a lot of the information that i'm going to be citing is also available online and i'm going to leave my sources in the description block so you can take a look make decisions for yourself and understand what i'm talking about a little bit more in depth so take what i say and use it to inform your own opinion but make sure that you're doing your own research so you can come to conclusions yourself is how i like to think about people making videos and giving information so it's important to do research no matter how much you trust somebody <laughs> And as a background of who I am and why I'm making this video, I'm a nail tech, my name's Cheyenne, and I'm allergic to Hema, Dihema, and another monomer. I don't know what the other monomer is because chemical testing in the city I live in has over a two year waiting list. And I don't know any other alternative solutions to getting those tests other than waiting. Anyways, I'm not currently in an active allergic reaction state but i have been in the past and not so far off past i'm allergic to hema i'm allergic to monomers some of them so i would say i have a, like a pretty lived experience with this allergy i've been allergic to hema for quite a few years and uh, i still work what is hema what is it you know like I read an article where a woman was talking about HEMA being demonized in the media and I think that personally I don't feel like it's being demonized. I think that having information about chemicals that we use on ourselves and our clients is important and some of them have negative side effects and HEMA might be one of them. HEMA is a monomer. Monomer is used for adhesion in our products and they're also sensitizing. So why do we use HEMA? We use monomer in our systems. I'm specifically talking about curable gel, UV LED gel. We use HEMA for adhesion. HEMA adheres to the nail plate really well. It works very well on the nail plate. It loves water. So it's a great additive for adhesion. Something I learned also is that it's very good for keeping polymer very like quite flexible and not rigid. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's good to use in making uh, plastic. So if it's really good for adhesion and adhering to water, which also nails contain water, that means there's going to be less lifting. So if you take out the idea that it's also a common allergen, it is a really good product to use for adhesion. So where do the problems occur in using HEMA? So I'd like to talk a little bit about chemical composition of a nail product, of a gel, perhaps a base gel. And I'm just saying this how it is because I am not sponsored by any brands and I'm also allergic to like so much of the nail industry that I can just say this. I don't have to worry about the repercussions. Whereas maybe sometimes people might not talk about this just because they don't want to seem like, like a whistleblower or something, you know? like be red taped or red flagged. So there's always a suggested usage rate for making a product. And HEMA's is 35% or lower, 35% being probably too high to use. I would say that's probably not a good amount of HEMA to use in a product, it's just too much. I'm sure you could probably create a chemical formula that has 35% that cures properly with a certain lamp, but I just think it's too much. Personally, I think that chemical compositions with 10% or lower are probably safer for use. I believe that the EU uh, banned the use of HEMA and DiHEMA in consumer grade products and only nail technicians can use anything with product that contains HEMA or DiHEMA. Some companies sometimes use more than what the recommended usage rate is, even though 35% is quite high and probably will cause an allergic reaction. You could add even more HEMA if you want because it's suggested usage. It doesn't mean that you have to follow the rules. You can add more. If you add more, your product probably will be less likely to lift and it's also cheaper because monomer is cheap. Another reason why people can develop allergies is improperly cured product. 
something that I learned while researching is that the lamp that you use with your product is very important. Like probably the number one important factor into curing your gel properly is that it's using the correct light. And just because something feels hard doesn't mean it's properly cured. You can do a test with an off-brand light to make sure it's curing your specific product properly and I'll link that down below. I'm not going to get into how to do that but it does seem like it's relatively simple. I haven't done the test. I'm just going to buy the light for the brand I use the most just because I know that they make safe products. Proper, <laughs> so this is hard to say, proper polymers I proper polymerization isn't something that you can see with the naked eye it's not like oh you can see like oh there's a bubble and that means it's not properly cured that's true but even after your nails feel rock hard there is a chance that that the proper cure of the gel didn't occur i don't know if i can say proper polymerization over and over so a proper cure of gel means that it's 80 percent or more cured but even at 80 percent if the chemical composition of the product isn't safe and the bonds aren't properly created, HEMA or another monomer, because it's not just HEMA that people are allergic to sometimes, can leach out of the product and can cause an allergic reaction to the person wearing the product. An allergic reaction happens by something like HEMA, which is a very small molecule, by it entering your skin and then your body's reaction to that. So if you're going to become allergic, then your body will be like, no, try to push it out. And if your body is okay with it, it will just be there and be okay with it. Improper use of products, that's a huge one. So improper use of product can look like a lot of different things. It could be, you know, you learning nails and getting some gel flooded into your sidewalls or your cuticle area and then not taking the extra precautions to wipe that away properly and then start over. It could look like leaving the residue on your bottle and not realizing it's there and touching it with your bare hands and over a period of time that entering your skin barrier and you getting an allergic reaction. It could look like improperly cured product being filed off of um, someone's nails and, and the dust like coming into contact with your skin and over time that creating a reaction and because you can't see properly cured products all of the time you don't know unless you're using the right light that if that product is properly cured or not Sometimes at home gel kits, um, they come with like a dinky little lamp and you're supposed to like do your full set with like this weird tiny light and I don't believe that those are probably tested to make sure that people are able to cure their products safely and properly. I would probably just like keep away from those altogether. I think if you are at home, maybe look at like a system that is not gel. <laughs> Just because there's so many safety risks, unless you're able to access like a gel at home course, which I know that, that some schools offer, I would not go too deep into trying to DIY without an education. There's a lot of risk involved even just working as a nail tech and someone who has monomer allergies telling you this is... You know, like I wouldn't say that if it wasn't the truth. I really like the polish system Dazzle Dry. Like I think there's ways to do art on it and I just am, it lasts like gel and it looks really nice. And I think if you're at home and you're not wanting like overly complicated gel art on your hands, this is a really good system. I wouldn't buy a product that you didn't know any information about. I think that's really important to say. You can go to suppliers' websites and they don't have any MSDS and they don't have any ingredients listed and it's really frustrating. As somebody who struggles with an allergy, I would like to have the information readily available so I don't have to send an email to figure out if I can use something or not. And I don't think that's hard to do because I know that certain companies do it already. There can be a lot of gaslighting in the industry and this is talking from 
a professional perspective, I've come into contact with brands that claim hypoallergenic and I would buy their product and see HEMA as one of the ingredients listed in their products. HEMA is not a hypoallergenic product. It's one of the most common sensitizers in our industry. And I think that it's important for brands to not call themselves hypoallergenic if they contain HEMA. I've also seen brands have free from claims like non-toxic or free from these 10 chemicals that that makes a polish safer. It doesn't. I think that safety comes from accurately using your products and having an education of those products and the risks that are involved by using them. And there are risks, just like a lot of other things we do in life. So being properly informed to know that like if a product is five free, that doesn't mean that it's going to be safe for you or your clients. Marketing claims are something that, you know, are one of the easiest ways to sell to someone. So understanding that a free from claim makes you feel like something's going to be safe doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be safe. It's just to sell products sometimes, unfortunately. I think people should be transparent and I think people deserve transparency. All that being said, I don't think there isn't a place for HEMA in the nail industry. I think if you are not allergic to it and you are using a brand that is safe and reputable, continue using it. If you don't have a problem with it, then there's no need to fix it. But I do think there needs to be more transparency in the industry about monomers, HEMA, better education. I don't think that we all commonly go into the nail industry knowing what is an allergen and what isn't and what to do in case of if our client becomes allergic or if we become allergic. And those are things that need to be thought about, definitely. I want you to know that you can't cure your allergy. I've also seen videos online that say, how I cured my gel allergy. You can't cure it. You have to discontinue the use of the products that you're using, find a system that you're not allergic to and that's reputable and use that. And if you become allergic to that, you gotta switch out of that. You know, it's very hard and complicated. It's, it's not just like uh, taking a pill or using a cream. If you do find yourself sensitized to ingredients in your gel polish, I would say going to a doctor and getting re a referral to an allergist that can help you, it needs to be a chemical patch test, not just like the regular patch test, is helpful and important. Obviously, like I talked about earlier, there can be some barriers into getting those things, but it's one of the best things you can do. I would say if you're a professional, research and look into brands that use oligomers rather than monomers. I think honestly, that's probably where the industry should head. I do think that like the industry could change to a more safe standard and use safer products for everyone, not just people who aren't allergic to monomers. <laughs> so in hindsight, what we've talked about here is that making sure the lamp you use is a lamp that can cure your product. This is like a really important takeaway. If you have an off-brand lamp, do a test to make sure that it can polymerize your products. If it can't, maybe look into getting the lamp that can. Use a dust collector. Proper PPE is really important. Something people don't talk about is when you become allergic to HEMA, you need to use chemical resistant nitro gloves. That means they're gonna be four ml of thickness or higher. You can't just use the gloves they sell at the beauty store. They won't work. You need to practice clean and neat application. All of the things you learned in nail school about making sure there's just tiny little amount of space between the product and the skin, that's all good. That's very important to know. Making sure you remove all of the product away from your skin, your client's skin, whoever's skin that has the gel on it if it's uncured. Making sure you get a good hand wash, remove dust. Okay, so this is the end of the video. I'm gonna end with letting you know that the reason why I made this video is because the allergy is really painful like it's not like being allergic to a dog or like sneezing because you have pollen allergies you don't get just to take an allergy pill and be okay like your skin around your nails are affected at first it can be like a blister and something small and you don't really think it has anything to do with nails like when I first got the allergy I was like oh weird why am I getting these weird little blisters I thought it was just like 
something I put my hands in at my other job or something, you know? And eventually it developed into something where I got like big blisters and when I used a certain product that had a very high amount of monomer in it, my nails lifted off of the beds, which was really alarming. It's very painful. It's just not, it's not cool, you know? Like it's a chemical allergy is not anything to mess around with and I hope by making this video that I could maybe just like add a little bit more of a caution to people who are DIYing or working in the industry and don't know much about HEMA allergies because when I started I think I knew eventually that an allergy could happen but I didn't know what the severity was I didn't know what it looked like and I like I didn't know anything about it until it became something that I had. Nails are fun and they're supposed to be fun. So keep on having fun. But because we work with chemicals, like err on the side of caution when you're working is really important. And yeah, I hope you like this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and make sure you share with your nail friends. If you know somebody who is getting into the nail industry and really excited and you want them to be safe and informed, share this video. There's lots of links down below that you could further learning about HEMA monomers, chemical allergies. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you like this video as well. Yeah, it was kind of hard to make it because it's like I have a lot in my mind and I like learning a lot, but organizing the facts and my thoughts and opinions into a video like this was a lot of work. Okay, bye.